So who's the guest this week? Uh, Turtleberry Johnson himself. You didn't call anybody, Gannon? What the fuck? No, I uh, I mean like off like if I could somehow talk my friend Logan. He's from Alaska, bro. He's like a one dude in Arizona I really hung out with a lot, just because like. This is my homie, like, he let me stay with him for, like, fucking five months, bro. And all he mm-hmm. asked for at the end was 150 bucks. That was it. I'm like, are you sure, bro? You're like, he just let me stay with him. Like, fucking, like, Lo- Logan dude is cool <laughs> as fuck. And I uh, like yeah. having him on. Like, he's got a lot of fucking Alaskan stories, like, where I'm like, dude, what? And if you met this dude, he's like, doesn't seem like it. He seems like he's from fucking California. But. If I yeah. a polar bear? Uh, his, uh, I think it was his uncle has been attacked by bears twice, bro. One time they found, like, they found this dude, like, what, they brought a helicopter in, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, like, search and rescue type shit. Because yeah. he was, like, tr- like, they were trying to find him, find him. And they found him, like, clutching, like, his f- pistol, like, shaking. And, like, he had a fucking bear dead over him. Jesus like, Christ. He was, <laughs> yeah, he was, like, tear it apart. Too like he's like got fucked by this bear, like fucked up by this bear. Excuse me, it sounds insensitive when you just say yeah, but the bear fucked him up. He got fucked by the bear. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, essentially, like, yeah. dude, on some red non-consensual. Shit. Yeah, yeah. He said no, and then the bear was like, "I don't know what that means." He said you should have dressed differently. That's what the bear said. He said you should have dressed sounds differently. Like- Every white college student in America. He said, I thought this one was knocked out. <laughs> it's, it's free game if they're unconscious, right? I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I wish you would step back from that podcast, my friend. Oh. You could record some audio. In the world that we created. Ooh. And welcome back, guys, to Something Original Podcast. My name is Gannon. And I'm Chase. Hey, uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, first off, I want to just say you can find us on all platforms. That's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, etc., etc. You are, well, If you want it, truthfully, you will be able to find it, truthfully. Okay. And uh, we got some we got some good shit this week. Sorry, good stuff this week. Um, Language, man. Come yeah, on. I know. I gotta watch it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we definitely have some <laughs> topics this week. Uh, yeah, big. Well, don't don't forget to plug the Patreon, my guy. That's a big thing. Oh, <clears throat> we got an incentive. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> you can also find us on the uh, Patreon if you want to subscribe to that. That would be absolutely fucking beautifully pa- fantastic, freaking beautifully and fantastic. Um, I heard it's only five dollars a month. It's only five dollars, or if you, in other alternate reality, five schmeckles. That's it. That's all it takes. Yeah. You know, their economy recovered over the course of a week, and they're actually a equi- They're they're equal value to the American dollar. It's kind mm-hmm. of crazy. Yeah, the turnaround, yeah. the turnaround. It was crazy. Incredible. I heard all off of communist no i'm just kidding we're but we have some <laughs> topics this week <laughs> um do you just want to get into it i kinda dude i mean okay also on the patreon if you subscribe dude i heard that there's like pilk in chase's future or dilk in mine and death our friends on there chapter one this ganon dude it keeps fucking lagging but i promise you there's some good stuff that i have planned for chapter two loss of character introduction um a little bit of character development i just want it to be mm-hmm. pristine honestly and i apologize yeah. for the the latency in the delivery of death our friend because i know no, people, it, some people are asking about it so i, I need to yeah. get on it <laughs> well i apologize as well because next caller yeah, we we have that new show next caller on there uh only have done one episode so far in a um it's a pretty easy format for us to do i just you know we just we are I mean, super busy. Gan- Gannon's going to school, you know. Mm. I'm doing my own thing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really doing much, but and I also talked talked about having my own show on the P- Patreon. Mm-hmm. Just haven't gotten to it yet. I'm just, I'm really, tr- 
Untitled. I'm actually thinking about changing the name. I've been thinking about it a lot. Mm. I want to put it in a format where it's going to be very engaging, mm. and it'll be it'll be something that people are like looking for, you know. Of course. But with that, it takes a lot of time and processes to go through and all that other shit. And I have another side thing that I'm working on that as well. So I'm a busy bee. Oh, dude. I No, ex- no excuse, though. We are going to make the Patreon worth the $5 a month. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, it's only five schmeckles, you know, at the end of the day. Five schmeckles. And, hey, guys, if we get 10 Patreon subscribers, like Gannon was saying, Pilk and Dilk are in our future. We'll drink it live on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Video. With our mouths. With our <laughs> fucking mouths, dude. You're probably thinking, what's the alternative orifice of choice? I don't know. That's for you to decide, you know? 20 um, Patreon <laughs> subscribers. You get a pick. <laughs> you get a pick. <laughs> We're out here making deals now. <laughs> We're out here. Hey, man, bargaining. What's that guy? Barney, Barney uh, Rigamortis? Barney Rigamortis, you know, he, he's always he, trying to cut you a deal. He, he's trying to cut you a deal, but overall, he wants to see some dirty offices getting filled with some kind of mm. random substance. You know what I'm saying? But it's back to you, mine, Gannon. But... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barney, for chiming in there. That dude is fucking foul. Um, yeah, well, he he gave us a good deal on these mics. You know, can't complain. That's true. But he didn't on the hikes. Or know. the suckies. Yeah, dude. I didn't even get my fucking ninja chop from that guy. And that's what I think about yeah, it. What? Well, I mean, he'll probably say, like, eh, it's in the process. You know, it's going to ship out here and there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Hey, yo, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> we're fucking... Shut the fuck up, dude. He's, he's yeah, dude. He just lies all the time. He's, he a, he's, he's, he's like a, a used car salesman, dude. Isn't that what he is, though? It essentially, you know. That's what his essence a, is. Yeah. <laughs> he just radiates used car salesman. That's probably the worst kind of person, honestly. <laughs> uh, just if you can get that vibe from somebody, leave. Turn around. Do whatever you got to. Absolutely. But speaking of uh, used car salesmen, <laughs> I'm... Uh, Abortion rights are up in the air right now. We were talking, we were like very minimally discussing this like before the podcast started, but we both mm-hmm. see eye to eye on the discussion. Um, I want to, I want to yep. see like what, what you, you're, you're more political than I am, and I like, I'm not even saying that as like a, like a diss. Yeah, like it's good because mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck usually is going on. You know, I just see, well, yeah, I just see the perception yeah. of like other people talking about it but i know you research these kind of things i do i it's not it's something i got into like out of high school uh my senior year i had a government class and it just really like intrigued me it was it kind of came out of nowhere it was uh because i was very rebellious i was i always grew up like this rad skater kid didn't really care about anything i just wanted to vibe and live life you know but I took that government class and I just fucking got indoctrinated into the woke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I just, it just it became interesting to me. And I actually like thought about even going into like political science in college. But then I was like, nah, that's too, that's too much, honestly. And for one, political science, I feel like it's just a shit degree. Yeah. But it's, anyways. Here's a certificate oh, for lying. <laughs> it, basically like how yeah you basically get a certificate for being a fucking corrupt liar piece of shit turberry johnson and some of the best like politicians in my point of view don't even come from like a a poli sci uh oh, oh. background there you go. yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> they they come from like working class like you know backgrounds like uh, bernie sanders fucking he what was, what the fuck was he he was like a construction worker and then he was like an author and a civil rights activist and a civil rights activist fuck in bernie sanders i didn't want to say fuck bernie sanders but like fuck in bernie sanders yeah you man. gotta put the emphasis on the in you know yeah <laughs> he's crazy 
But anyways, going go, fucking let's let's get back to the topic. So Roe v. Wade, unfortunately, there's a leaked draft. So it's not it hasn't been like like taken out of the constitution mm-hmm. or the ruling is it hasn't gone away yet. The draft was leaked. But basically in the draft it was saying like we have the votes to take it away and we're probably going to take it away and here's a list of reasons why we think it should be taken away. What? So this I'm what? sorry. What was the reasoning? No, that they they did for um people listening and it's, don't, don't know. The the draft uh was written by one of the Supreme Court justices. He's been on the Supreme Court for a handful of years now. Mm. I don't know how many years. He's been he's been there for a while. But he he basically just uh he he quotes like it's a religious thing uh the it's it's a life it's a potential life you know that's that's really what it is it's just like it's they they're considering it a life and you shouldn't be able to kill the life the potential life quote unquote i don't i mean that's just like one of the million reasons why they think it should be uh, illegal for an abortion. But since they are in a position of power now and they have the votes to overturn it, they're most likely going to overturn it. But let's get away from abortion for just a second. What else does that mean that they could do? They can overturn. We've already heard discussions of them talking about shit like this. There are some states, some Lawmakers, primarily Republican, all of them are Republican, they're all saying that, or some of them are saying that interracial marriage could be next. There, There's talks of banning contraceptives Wait. and condoms. There's, Wait, <laughs> there's... What are they... Yeah. What are they yeah. talking about? What are they talking about? So... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a lot to take in. Like, I, this is fucking news to me. You know, this the, the, Roe v. Wade is just the start. This is because this is what. Uh, let's talk about Roe v. Wade. I guess Roe v. Wade was passed back in the '70s. It was passed by a majority conservative Supreme Court. So that means the same people back then, or the same people today who are trying to overturn it, are also uh, a part of the same group of people who passed it you know Mm -hmm. and the reason why it passed was because of it ruled on the grounds of privacy american privacy so an abortion should be your it should be protected by your privacy and your privacy should be protected right yes disclosed that's yeah that's also why interracial marriage is allowed in this country unfortunately it should just be allowed it shouldn't have to deal with privacy but <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why it's allowed that's the reason why gay marriage is allowed that's the reason why uh it's the reason why a lot of other things are there i can't think of any i was going to say board v education but i don't think that ruled on privacy but that's another thing they're also trying to overturn that <laughs> oh man yeah so so i mean and all these people they're like you know, if you don't want an abortion, uh, you can just always go to a blue... Because they're basically leaving it up to states' rights, you know? Yeah. But but there's they're trying to pass all these laws to say we're like, yeah, you can go across state lines, but it'll be a felony if you do that and then you get an abortion. There's There's information coming out that's saying, like, they're already starting to track, like, period trackers... So they know when, like, <laughs> they know when women are, like, late on their periods or they're oh not getting their periods or if they're having their periods. They're, they're not even, like, doing that bullshit heartbeat bill anymore. Like, Louisiana just passed the bill, like, last week saying, like, if you conceive a baby, like, basically if you have sex mm. and that sperm enters the egg... You have to carry that child to birth. You cannot abort it at any point between the heartbeat or contraception. So that's basically three weeks, four weeks. 
and you, you can't have an abortion. So basically, if you have sex, you, you can't have an abortion or it's a felony. This is, it's heft, like, f- dude. Like, it just seems so, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond with, like, looking at everything taken into account was an extremely mm-hmm. cynical view of, like, what's going on. It just seems, bro, okay, just looking at everything from the outside view, and everything, I agree with uh, pretty much everything you're saying, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it just seems, because after even looking at the, the states that have voted for it, and, you know, like, I was talking, like, my mantra, it's, like, to each their own, you know, like, because mm-hmm. that's how you, the way I even see it in an ultimate view, it's how we learn from each other, you know, we're all learning about these different social things yeah but it just seems so weird to me that if every single state has voted for this then why it just seems like they just want us to fight each other constantly constantly Mm -hmm. over anything like so like it's that's my body my choice i feel that Mm -hmm. i feel that entirely you know so i don't I don't understand people, honestly. I don't, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just for, like I'm just giving no, like my, yeah. my my view on it. It just seems like they want us to like hate each other yeah. instead of like so, looking like, at the primary source, which is oh, oh, just what? Yeah, oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. That, that my my grunts yeah. were just like oh uh, okay. The government, like just the government, the government. The so, gov- oh, this is another <laughs> thing. The party of small government, you know, Republicans are always like, we're a small government, there should be no overreach, blah, blah, blah. This is the ultimate form of, like, big government invasive overreach. Controlling a woman's body, telling telling them what they can and can't do with their own body. Yeah. That's, and that's a huge breach of just personal rights, and civil you, liberty. And you could bring this, I feel like you could bring this shit fucking back to Ronald fucking Reagan. Honestly, think about it. Like it, he, it mainly started, yeah, around that time where this random ultra-religious push to ban abortions. Because like I said, it's, this passed in the 70s. There was an overwhelming majority of people in America that just agreed abortion, even if you don't like it, if you don't think it's right, you st- still should have access to an abortion. Because not everybody believes in the same shit as everybody else. And I just think also like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You guys, you guys are saying, you guys are saying, life, right? And I agree. A life mm-hmm. is a life can be great, but a lot of times, if there's not any support and background, then what is life? The beginning of existence is so important. That's when we're just mm-hmm. absorbing everything around us. So if you have all these kids that are born, and they don't have family, mm-hmm. they don't have, they don't get lucky like I did. I got adopted. You know, mm-hmm. they, they don't always happen like that. Majority of the time, even after talking to people around, like just in, like throughout my travels, a lot of the times it doesn't start like that. One of my good friends in mm-hmm. the Navy, she was a she was like an assistant social worker. She would help out at this like an orphanage. And we've had like long conversations where she was just telling me about all these countless kids that are just so good and such beautiful people. But because of everything that's going on around them, they just absorb the life as just pain. You can't just have that as like a reinforcement starting off in life. Mm-hmm. For serious, like, I just don't understand. Like, people need to actually look at like all situations in life with empathy. I'm telling you, like, if you, ah, uh, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> it's just like and. The- it's another thing, too, because, like, how you were saying, it, I think you're going off the basis of, like, what quality of life is, you know? Exactly. What quality of life is that child going to have, especially in this country? For one, we don't have <laughs> livable wages in this country. We have a crumbling health care system that is one of the most expensive health care systems in the world, and it's one of the most least effective. We have the highest rate in... Uh, Infant mortality in this country and in developed countries. 
that is how how are you trying to force women to give birth to children that they may or may not want and expect them to <laughs> given the stats on the matter that child is going to it's going to end up dead we don't have health care they don't have health care they don't have a great maternity leave in this country at all the, at all it, it, at all at all we we don't have sick leave we don't have adequate pay we don't have just the fucking child care system or education system for one they're fucking attacking that too for some reason they they want the child to fail and be as dumb as possible they want that child to die but i here's here's where it kind of gets conspir conspiratorial they're they're slapping felonies on women who they may miscarriage during pregnancy. That's none of their fault. And that can be a very traumatic part of pregnancy mm -hmm. is a miscarriage. It, it happens. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And it's not at all the mother's fault. But they can still slap a felony charge on that mother. And mm -hmm. what, what happens to felons in this country? They're put in prison. They're put in prison. And what else? They lose the right to vote. Forever. And what, what we've seen, what we've seen in the, <laughs> the, the, all of almost this entire country's inception, the least amount of people that vote, it better favors Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the, so... <sighs> I just... I feel like if people would just look at the entire picture it's just all about oh, just no man. it's not even about the entire picture because guess what we were talking about it before the podcast hmm. there's not a single state in this country where uh approval to make abortions illegal surpasses 30 percent is it and that and that and if it's a true democracy at that point it's done and it's done like if, if it's a true democracy, we the people shit, then it's done. I think if it the v is the votes are what they are, and it's what is given, then that is the law, because that's how democracy fucking works. Not totalitarian government where it's like, hey, all right, we're gonna take everything you guys say into consideration. No, it's not even consideration. They're just taking these votes in. They're like, where could we go with this? Oh. This is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Totally just go against yeah. every, what, every, what everyone's trying to, to achieve, which is like a, a world of where people aren't suffering. It, see, it would make sense if it was like 50%. Then okay. Maybe that could be a possibility. If, if a majority, even if it was a slight majority, then it could be up for consideration. It would be hard to pass on a split vote like that. But it doesn't even surpass 30%. So we're talking max 29% of people support making abortion illegal, making Roe v. Wade uh, go away. That's literally just a handful of like evangelical Christians, maybe. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's really the only religion, too, that I know of that like where the church is, it disagrees with abortion. But for one, it's not in the Bible. Abortion's not in the Bible. Like, you can't have an abortion. And for one, God killed, like, millions of babies in the Bible. Just want to throw that out there. But Yeah. But at the same time, like, if they voted on these subjects, then it would be different. You know? Yeah. If they truly it, were, if they, if, if they were practicing what they're preaching, then they would actually mm -hmm. want to see the change that they want to see. But it, I, because uh, I believe in, I, I believe that it should be a f true democracy, and like what you, sh you, I, I think you posted it, weren't you? The, the states all blue. Yeah, all all yeah. the states. That was the thirty percent thing that I showed. Yeah, and that, they that's, all they all didn't think it should be overturned. Then, that, then, yeah, I, that that's how I see it. I mean, like, um, I think that even if they. 
I think the House of, House of Burgesses, even when they pass things off to them, I don't know. I feel like it should be like civilian ran, honestly. That sounds kind of fucking crazy and insane. But like just hey, guess, different people let me, from let me, all different backgrounds. Let me tell you what that is. What's that? Socialism. Uh, well, I just, why, why do you think this country is so hyper terrified of socialism? We are we are propagandized at a, such a young age. We are taught like the evils of communism and socialism in school, but never like the failures of capitalism and all that shit. We are taught at such a young age that socialism is bad because it makes people poor. But no, it actually the whole purpose of socialism is just putting the people in charge. If it could be, if it okay. See, because that's where I that's where I get mixed up with it. Because I feel like, unless we totally eradicate the concept of politicians, then that we can't have perfect socialism. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, it, I totally agree. This is where it gets. Uh, this is where it. Because uh, you'd have to break down the constructs of our other. reality. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's all we know. Now that's, what I now what I'm. Sorry. I I totally agree with you. But having – yes, I do think everybody should have a vote, 100%. I think once – yeah, we should get rid of the politicians, period. I feel like if we can vote online <laughs> and, like, vote on shit just individually, like, oh, okay, let me go to the gov.com, the gov.gov, and uh, let me vote for these issues that I care about. But as long as I feel like by- – I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But like having curators no. that are also civilian, like no, nothing, nothing, like somehow yeah. having a, this system, it could fucking work, bro. I'm agreeing with you. It could. I'm like, yeah, it could like, I know because I'm, I'm honestly, bro, I think about it more and more. I agree with a lot of anarchy and I know that fucking word scares the shit out of like most fucking old people. Yeah. Like they think mm-hmm. of, they think of anarchy with this extreme negative stigma that, that means that there's no government, no rules. No, it's just people that are like, we don't want to recognize the government. We want to see people that want to see the community change, help it change together. Mm-hmm. It's not like, yeah, I just, sorry. I didn't mean to give my little spiel there, but that's what I'm, I'm with. I'm with you, dude. Like, honestly, if we could get, yeah. and it could be cu- somehow curated with people that want to see like an actual national change. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think I'm sorry. I ha- I have a <laughs> ton of ideas that could like help clear the gap with politicians cuz the only way to really be a politician in this country is to be extremely radical with whatever it is you got to hit the or very charismatic is what I should mm-hmm. say. You have to be extremely charismatic and be able to pull in donations or you have to just be extremely rich. Yeah. The campaign, that, dude. Like you've seen yeah. the movie. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, it's it's like, but that's like that's the big disparity. So like, your average American realistically can't run for any sort of political position to make real change from their position. You know, mm-hmm. it's only you only can give it to like a, a select few people. Because and this is this is where we should. This is where I kind of wanted to get to. The House of right now should be the only body of government that creates laws. Abolish the Senate because that's outdated. It's an outdated form. The I only am reason the why the Senate was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> I just the only it. reason why the I was yeah itching. yeah no it's it's okay. It's a uh, the only reason why the Senate is around is because uh, back in the old days. Not a lot of Americans were informed because they didn't have television or the newspaper wasn't really that, mm-hmm. you know, easy to get. So a lot of people were just going to be ill-informed on actual policies and the people who they were going to vote for. So this, the Senate was put in place so they – or that was why the Electoral College exists, but that's also a reason why the Senate exists as well. It's to give – all these states a fair chance, quote unquote, for policies to pass. But now we live in such a informative era where anything is at a finger finger 
Whiff's like grasp, you know, mm. you can look up anything. So we should just get rid of this in it and just have the house, but expand the house significantly. So we don't have these crazy gerrymandered districts where and, and psych evaluations. Sorry. I'm just going to add it. Yes. Psych evaluations, yeah. background checks, you all know, of it. There, there were a bunch of like, uh, Alzheimer's medications, uh, or prescriptions. Yeah. Alzheimer's medication prescriptions, uh, given to a bunch of members of Congress. Are you, uh, that makes like me a doctor. Th- I just, <laughs> oh my. They're little, bro. People say empty They're suits. Li- I'm sorry. Like yeah. get, get the proper psychiatric care you need, not try to run a government. I literally saw a video today. Uh, of this uh, debate going on in Mississippi, a great place to live. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a debate on like abortion. They were trying to pass a bunch of abortion shit. Uh, and the Democrat on the side is like questioning the bill that they're trying to pass. Like you're restricting access to this, this, that. Like you're making this a felony. Like, are you even aware this is in the bill? And the guy who introduced the bill was like, Honestly, I didn't even read the bill, but we need to pass this stuff to get an edge over you guys. Uh, get him out. Get, get him out. out. Get him that out. That should literally, you should be impeached on the spot mm-hmm. if that is what you think. If you don't read the shit that you're trying to pass, get out. You literally have one job. That's you like- get paid most, you get paid more than like, of anybody in your entire state. Just read the goddamn bill. It's literally your job. It's literally your job. You know, if someone <coughs> didn't do that at working somewhere, they didn't do their job, you know what happened to them? They, they would get fired. get fired. It's crazy. It's crazy. How, you know, some reciprocation would be sick. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> do you have anything to add to this? We've been going on for quite a bit, and... I just want to emphasize another thing. Like, I just want to emphasize it. It's not going to stop at Roe v. Wade. They're going to come after the Civil Rights Act. They're going to come after Board v. Education. They're going to come after interracial marriage. They're going to have. They're going to come after your right to privacy, your right to free speech, your right to anything. It's all up in the air at this point. I. Because mm. they're already trying. With interracial marriage, for what? Like, I think Alabama is trying to fucking get rid of that. Of course. Mm. <laughs> of course they are. Of course they are. Sweet home Alabama. Get the fuck out of here, bro. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But they're fucking cousins down there, bro. Mm. Mm. And there's sh- blood. <laughs> Blood. No crip. Blood. Cri- all blood. <laughs> no crip. All blood. Saint? No. <laughs> but speaking of change, I actually had something I was wanting to bring up to you. Or, or unless you want, do you, do you still want to keep continuing with this topic? It's up to you, bro. No, I'm good. It's an important topic. It's just, right. Yeah. And I, it is an important topic, but I think everybody should have a right to their own bodies, period. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. The government shouldn't be telling me what I can and can't do with my body. Y- yeah. Your, your body, if you're against your abortion, idealism, if you're, everything. Exactly, yeah. If you're against abortion, don't get one. Exactly. Easy, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and then you see that how the, how great the system truly is at that point. Oh, I actually did want to bring it. Sorry, I did want to bring yeah. up something else. <laughs> I saw a TikTok, and this guy, uh, this guy worked at an abortion clinic. He was like a big, like kind of brawly guy. And his job at the abortion clinic was literally just to protect the people coming out of the clinic from protesters, like throwing stuff, assaulting them. What a hero. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Well, that was his job. Like the abortion, abortion clinics literally hire people that's for sad. that shit. That's, that's sad. That's sad. That's ex- extremely sad, especially like Planned Parenthood. They, they don't only get abortions at those places. Yeah, they go in for like STD testing. Like they have OBJ OBGYNs there, right? Too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like the people could go there just to be getting checked in general. You crazy fucks. Yeah. Exactly. 
but this guy he uh that was his job he was uh pr- he protects the women coming out of the abortion clinics you know mm. but he was out partying one night like super late he was up and he was out until like three or four in the morning and instead of like driving home it was gonna be like 45 minute drive 45 minute drive back mm. uh he just went to the abortion clinic and slept in his car and he woke up uh, a little early, went into the clinic, but before he went in, he saw a, a line of a bunch of black cars outside the the clinic. And when he went inside, it was only suburban white women in the clinic. So he found out that these white suburban women who have been seen protesting that same clinic no go in and get secret abortions they pay the doctor there secretly or whoever That's... whoever pays whoever and they get secret abortions and the reason why they drive in black cars is obviously because they don't want to drive their own car there and be seen yeah. they have people pay drivers to drive them there and drive them back and that's why if you have the idealism of like to each their own, you know, that's it. Yeah. If if you didn't come at people sideways, then you would you wouldn't look f- so f- dumb and foolish. That so. guy also got fired from the uh, abortion. Of course, clinic. of course. Yeah. Just like they killed the guy it, that did the water power cars. Exactly. And, yep. Then there's so many other cases. And that's another thing. Also, just because they ban abortion doesn't mean that rich white powerful people aren't going to have access to them they will still have access they will keep their access to abortions shit they'll probably fly Politicians. doctors out to their houses exactly so it's it's only going to affect the poor and needy but the people that pass those laws are still going to have access to them it's like they almost want like a society of people that are just going to be broken and just wanting to go with the flow of whatever is going on Whatever the narrative. Hey, man. Hey. Insane. You nailed it right on the head. That's exactly what they want. They just want to... They want a generation full of poor, broke, broken people. Hmm. It's almost like history repeats itself unless you look at it with an open mind. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 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 Crazy. Crazy. The Great Depression. That just popped off my head. I just feel like... There's, it's about to, the, the boiling pot is about to boil over. Oh, and that's why Just wait. we need to understand each other, guys. It's so important. It's so important. Don't, do, if you're going out and about and you're like, even if you have a thought in your head, like if someone's in a different situation than you are, try to honestly think, use that thing, you, that thing between your ears, that's called a brain, right? Look at life. With your brain, you see that these people everywhere are in a different living situation than you are. It doesn't mean that they're not hurting. It doesn't mean that they're not dealing with their own problems. The, when we start separating from each other, that's when everything is just going to go to shit. Look at life with more love, honestly. Ugh. Even with this, like, you may not agree. It doesn't mean, like, it doesn't mean that you're right. The- even if the mother wants to have an abortion, she can always have a kid later on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just like the reason why people get an abortion, because for one, it could be a, a medical harm to the mother. Like the mother's life could be in danger during the pregnancy. So they're like, all right, we're kind of forced to terminate the baby. Uh, or the mother just isn't ready to have a goddamn kid mm-hmm. financially, uh, mentally, you know, just... There's so many factors that can go into it. And back in the day, that would force marriages, but then would create hostile environments for these kids with exactly. abusive relationships where people that don't actually love each other just force each other to, to have a signed document saying that they're together doesn't mean that they actually love each other. And you're not creating a, any kind of environment for these kids, you know? And then, that, then, well, then that's you have what to think about your own life. You're like, oh, my dad used to beat me. Awesome, dude. Awesome. You know what? You're now creating yeah. another whole generation of... Where they'll potentially be beaten by their dads. Think about you got to think about mm-hmm. it deeper than just like, oh, abortion is wrong. Think about 
what's actually going to happen to these kids. Think about yeah, it's that. Not, it's not just a, an individual issue either. It's not just a mother and doctor issue with baby. It's it's a family issue. Like there's another person in this thing too. And if Pretty. they both agree that they're not ready to have kid, they should absolutely be allowed to terminate the nah, it's just it's your can, right. And, it's and you your know body, funny? it's your right. You know what's funny? The same kids that then grow up and then are broken, these same people judge them on their life. And what exactly. when where, and when the life that they were given. And that's Oh, so condescending. Look at yourself before you start looking at others. Jeez, peace. It's literally like, hey, I was born in poverty. Can I have food stamps? No. Oh, hey, I got a job. Can I, can I make a little bit more? I'm still not getting paid enough. No. Oh, oh, hey, I found a better job that pays more, but now I'm working like extraneous hours and I don't have any time for my family or, or mental myself health. even, or my mental health, can I get some, you know, like paid sick leave or like just vacation time? No. Hey, I found a job that does that, but <laughs> there's always, there's always going to be like issues with life that they're trying to put, they're trying to force people to be born in. We have a failed system already and you're forcing more people to accept a burden all right let's, let's get off the topic unless you have anything else you want to say uh i had another point but honestly i feel like we have we've 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 explained it you know like we've hammered it home yes um speaking of mental health i mean I, we could jump okay. into that yeah, let's go ahead. Let's um, do it. Speaking about the health, uh, Chase and I were discussing it just a little bit earlier in the week, and um, it's a uh, Happy Mental Health Awareness Month, actually, brother. Happy mental. Uh, wait, what'd you say? Mental sorry. health. Mental health awareness. Mental health awareness month. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I, I was like, I thought it was like suicide awareness month, but um, it's mental well, health I mean, that's the, that's what I'm ultimately going to get at because that that's, I mean, how people see the end of the road, you know, essentially. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's better to call it mental health word. Yeah, yes. I get you. Um, but I mean, this is like, I mean, it's huge. I mean, I, I feel very much towards this topic. Um, uh, cause I mean, I've personally been there, uh, myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I've, I mentioned it a little bit before. Uh, I go to therapy every, every Monday at 1 PM. Uh, I meet for my telehealth appointments. Um, you know, uh, I, I struggle with it. It's one thing that I've definitely struggled with my entire life. And honestly, guys, from the bottom of my heart, if you feel some kind of way towards your life that is negative, and like I just feel it in my chest right now even explaining it because I've been there and it hurts and it sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. But I know it seems so cliche when you hear, you're not alone. I'm going to tell you, you're not alone. There are people out here that really do care. I am so thankful for my therapist. Honestly, like I have, I've dug into my grief towards a lot of things. Um, I'm, and since I'm trying to focus it around suicide prevention, uh, last spring, uh, my cousin, uh, rest in peace. Her name is Kayla. She, uh, she, uh, she went out, she, uh, she OD'd. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, we we talk on the phone at least. Uh, at that point, it was like once every two weeks she would call me. Um, she was with this guy that I thought he was like he. You know, he would talk to me on Facetime and everything. And you know, I talked to both of them just to, just because she was down in Georgia and just wanted to just keep up. You know, um, mm -hmm. and you know, I was always gone in the Navy, but came back. You know, and like we grew up, like fucking hang out sometimes that's here but she was always mostly in georgia but as we grew up like both dealing with mental health in our lives like you know she would always talk to me about these certain things and i always would welcome it honestly and um yeah uh i'll never forget that day uh when i got the news and um it wasn't good um and what i'm trying to ultimately get at also like 
I also lost another one of my friends. I'm not trying to make this just sad. Um, he killed himself in August. Um, his name's Garrett Peters. Um, he was a he was a guy I was in the Navy with. Uh, he would call me. Uh, sometimes he would text me. And he would just uh, he, I, I, he was another person that I, I would told like, dude, whatever you're going through, just you can confide in me, and I hope you believe that. And uh, unfortunately, uh, what part of my grief is. I was in the psych ward when it all happened. And then when I got out, I got that news and I held a lot of the grief with me. And that's another different topic that I'm going with. I'm being super transparent right now. And honestly, I, I, I don't care to be vulnerable in these certain situations because I do feel for it. And I'm telling you, like, it, there's, a, there's a quote, I didn't write it down, unfortunately, that is in, actually, it's graffiti in Dayton. And it just, it's essentially like suicide um, doesn't stop uh, bad things from happening, but it, it stops potentially from any good things from happening. It's not, that's what it, I'm paraphrasing, of course. And I'm kind of yeah. going off on a tangent. I'm sorry about that. Um, no, you're, you're good, man. Just keep it going. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, and like I've, I've been I've been in places and like there's a time I mean that's honestly why I was in the psych ward I put a I put a 44 to my head and uh yeah I'm being I'm just going in fuck it uh and I pulled the trigger and uh the safety was on thankfully um and it was crazy cuz it was after those moments when you truly think about your life you think about everybody that it would affect Everybody that truly cares for you and wants to see the best for you would be absolutely shattered that you're gone. And you may not think that people do care about you, but I guarantee someone will be absolutely shattered that you don't exist in this world. So I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, if you think even remotely that you need to get help, just do it. Just do it. Everyone, everyone, there's like that stigma, like it's not manly to get help. It's not whatever that's that's why the suicide rate is so high for men it's because we don't want to talk about these kind of things because it makes us feel quote-unquote feminine or it's not feminine to have passion towards life that you want to have again it's not it's not it, wanting to be able to think at life or look at life with a different perception is is wrong it's not it's not i'm telling you it's a it's a human feeling yes just get the help you need. In fact, I'm going to just 1 800 273 8255. 1 800 273 8255. That is the hotline. And you know what's cool about it? Anybody can call it. Anybody can. And just please get that help you need. There's also, um, I saw it uh, sponsored, ironically. Also, it's a uh, this is app. It's not we're not sponsored by them. It's called BetterHelp. I keep seeing it, and mm -hmm. it seems very accessible. It seems like it could be good, you know. And and that's the good part. I know I'm with me. Sometimes it's like I don't want to leave my comfort zone to talk about these kind of things. And that's why we have like telehealth and things like that. You can you can get on FaceTime with these people. You get on Zoom with these therapists, and there's so many different ways of dealing with this kind of pain than ending it i'm telling you shit add me on instagram or something i you don't even have to add me bro just fucking message me bro and i'll be there i mean i'm i suck at texting i mean message me i'll get to you please please hold on but i would rather you go to a professional because i'm dealing with it my myself i'm trying to figure it out myself you know but yeah. i will i will try to help in any way i possibly can yeah, and uh, like like Gannon was saying, you know, like uh, better help is you know extremely accessible. Uh, we aren't sponsored, by the way. Better help is a it's very accessible, and I do think it's very affordable for any kind of budget. And at at any point, you know, whatever you're going through, it's worth it. You know, uh, but yeah, I, I've never had to go through any sort of grief like that. I've relatively just been a happy person my entire life but i understand like 
you know, I've been around people my entire life that go through that stuff and it's very apparent, but it's also very not apparent. Some people are really good at hiding it, but, uh, if you notice anything, you know, reach out to them, talk to them, try to make their day better, just slightly better and just keep at it. Don't let up at any point because you never know when somebody's going to slip. But give them resources. We're trying to give you guys resources as well. Mm-hmm. If you're going through anything, Gannon said he's available. I'm available too. Yes, that's awesome too. But please talk to a professional, professional. if you need serious help. Uh, we would be devastated if anyone close to us were to leave. Yeah. Um, but we'd be devastated if anybody left in any of those circumstances, you know. We only have to know them, but we would love to get to know you. Exactly. That's true. Oh, man, that was hefty. If there's people out there that, you know, want to come after me for my story or anything like that, then they can bring it up to me. But, you know, um, I want to be totally transparent, you know, especially with these kind of topics. You know, I, t- I, I know in the past I've talked about, like, my drug stories, and I hope you guys can look at those, honestly, as a sense of, like, I hope, like, when you hear these kind of stories, you think, like, wow, that guy was an idiot. And I hope you truly mean it, like, because, honestly, I was, you know? I was, I was trying to cover up my pain by taking certain substances, and I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart it will not help you. And it will not make you feel better the next day. I'm telling you. And I know I joke about it a lot. Because I like to laugh at my pain. Because that's just fucking... I'm weird like that. And it just it just helps me process things better. If I can just laugh at the pain. But I'm telling you. Just stay away from like... Stay away from the drugs. They, at the end of the day, they will not help you in any way. No. Unless it's marijuana sometimes. I'm not gonna. Be, uh, I'm not, well, ma- marijuana is medical. Yes. You know, it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's up there. I'm sorry. But so are opioid. So are opioids. That's, yeah. But the sense. But like, those are government, bro. Yeah. Yep. If you can't grow it yourself, then like, why are you putting it in your body? But you know, whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you you made a lot of good points. You want to repeat that number too? Just throw it out there again. One eight hundred. Two seven three, eight two five five. That's the one I got yeah. for the overall, just like suicide prevention mm-hmm. hotline. There's there's a million different hotlines too. We'll put them in the bio as well. Um, but yeah, we love you guys. We don't want you Please. to leave us. Yes. Um, but yeah, if you are going through anything at all, reach out to people. Reach out to professionals. Hit the hotlines. They'll help you. Hmm. I just wish, I wish the psych words were better, honestly, too. I feel like. Yeah, what's your, uh, you want to get into that, or? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. I'll give my, my honest, uh, like, I was in, uh, psych ward for 11 days. <clears throat> Voice cracking a little bit. Um, I was in the psych ward for 11 days. I was at the, the VA psych ward, and, um, it doesn't seem, to, it just, Especially in my case, it was just, like, they thought that, like, I was trying to, like, evade things. And, you know, like, so I was just trying to find an easy way out. And then by the end of it, they realized that, like, I was who I was trying to say I was. Because it was also abrupt Mm -hmm. in, like, my movement and, like, where I was going. So, yeah. So I, and, like, I went up there at one point and... I was trying to get nicotine gum, and I I noticed that they were, so I was like paying attention to everything in there because I like to like observe, and I noticed like where the cameras are, they have like a monitor in the office where they can see every camera in the building, right? As I'm walking up, I notice that they're all huddled around the monitor laughing, and from my outside perception they were looking at someone on the monitor as a group laughing 
And then when I came up, I knocked on the window hard as fuck because I, that's just me. And I don't appreciate that kind of, and then they literally, everyone behind that monitor ran, bro. Like it was like some high school, like if you're trying, if you're getting into a field, especially where you're trying to actually do a difference and help people psychologically, then do that. Don't go in it backhandedly where you're like one way to their face and then to take something like that to then break the trust in general. Like I saw that and I'm like, wow, this is who is helping veterans. I'm like, this is amazing. No, it's not. I'm obviously being sarcastic, but you know, and then there were some nice ones though. There were really, there were a couple people there that were truly nice and Mm -hmm. wanted to help people and see the best in people. Um, but besides that, it's just, it just, it's like they paint people like sometimes that have mental illness as a villain when sometimes it could be the people that will be, be the most caring towards you are the ones that have mental illness because they just know, they just understand like that kind of solitude, that kind of feeling. And they, they wouldn't want anyone else to feel that ever in their entire life. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's my take on psych words. Um, I mean, I've had, I've had other friends that have gone in, and <clears throat> my voice keeps cracking because, I don't, you know, um, they've been in there, and they've talked to me about it, and it just seems like everything, I keep bringing up Ronald Reagan because I just know he defunded all mental health institutes across America. That's a proven fact. And then that, and then... I mean, you can get into the full deep conspiracies of, like, leaded gas at the time, and it was almost like they were just trying to create an entire nation of people that were just fucking losing their mind. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was $100. I've talked about it before. It was $100 a day just to get into a mental institute, and that was in the fucking 60s, right? Just, Jesus Christ. Yeah? No, Ronald Reagan was in... 70s? The 80s. Oh. 80s. Oh, yeah, I, I don't even know why I said that. My... Yeah, my parents love him, or they think they do. Um, <laughs> my parents love him, and they they were the they were eighties babies. Um, yeah, and it's just crazy, bro. I like, think that's just, mm-hmm. that's why I just try to look at everything possible with an open mind, because they can just write narratives all fucking day, bro. Anybody yeah. can, like that has that kind but, of push. Sorry, yeah. I think no, it, it's fine. I think the I I'm, I didn't know you went to a VA psych ward. I know there's just like a systemic issue with like the VA. It's been like an ongoing problem for like years. Um, I I'm not trying to like say anything bad about you. Like it's just like the the fact that these people give so much to our country, they go in, fight your wars for you, and then when they come home with all these issues. You don't give them a lick of respect. You have this whole, like, VA institute designed to help them, but they don't. And they're probably one of the worst functioning organizations Mm -hmm. for veterans. Exactly. Like, I think we need to, for one, just have an emphasis on, like, social workers going forward in this country's future. Like, social workers need to be some of the highest paid people in the country, period. And have them at every level of society and like every form of institution and and lie detector tests on every kind of social situation that could pop up in their field you know what i'm saying i feel like i feel like lie detector tests are flawed though you think so i mean like yeah you can like take medicine and like lower your heart rate or something and then go even more extensive these are social workers do a piss test Piss test them before. Have that done before. If you want to be a so, if you truly want to be a social worker, like I think it should be like looked upon like more in depth. Like these are people that are trying to genuinely help people. Then that should be their motives mm-hmm. and that should be their actions. Yeah, because they, I, they can I say think, anything. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. I I don't think they should take a drug test. You honestly, don't, don't think I think. Like, like for, op- like heroin, maybe like weed, not so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just fairly legalized weed. Um, but 
Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I feel like you should drug test politicians before anybody. Oh. They don't get drug tested. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> they don't get drug tested. They should absolutely get drug But I, the thing is with the VA, they don't have social workers working there. It's just like government officials. I think on a federal level, I think they do get drug tested, though. Maybe that's why they suck. They're not taking enough drugs. Probably. Introspection. <laughs> They're not smoking enough weed. Uh, Probably. Sorry, is that a, is, was that offensive? Because you said uh, something about drugs. Oh no, dude, it's not fun. Like, dude, come on, man. I'm an advocate, dude. Okay, like they my had... body, my choice. Yes, I mean, and like I've been given meds, and I'm just saying, personally, I was like these just make me feel like a fucking robot. I much rather handle things myself, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, the, like, what is it? Antidepressants and stuff, stuff like that. Yep. It Because a lot of people are coming out now and are saying, like, it just, it takes away, it doesn't just take away, like, my uh, depressive, like, emotions. It takes away, like, my happy emotions, too. And it takes mm-hmm. it takes away all my emotions, and a lot of people are saying, like, I don't even want to take those anymore because I at least want to feel something, even if it is depression. I just want to be able to feel something. And that's that's just so weird. Like, I feel like we need to find an alternative for that. Therapy. Sorry, that was just like no, a random no. tan- tangent. I'm right. No, I'm right there with you I, uh, entirely. But, wh- like, dude, like, I'm just like therapy for me specifically like just speaking from my own perception dude i've literally i've like full on like cried in front of this lady and like like i've probably i've been going to therapy i think now for like a month and a half and it's crazy yeah. just from that month and a half of going like cuz it she she doesn't even like on like she just, she she gives her like her input on a lot of things but she's just most of the time she's like like what are you thinking about like what what are some things that have bothered you and it's crazy when i go back to these times that i've just like tried to push on and just cover up there's a lot of residual Mm -hmm. pain there so like when i'm going back there i've literally like full-on cried in front of her like i've been like there's times where like i have have, like been choked up just crying i'm like i just want i just need a second and she she just it's amazing it's like I'm telling you psychologically, like I'm always, I question my existence 10 times a day, but like something about going there. Cause a lot of times I know how people feel like they just think that like going to people isn't going to help, but I'm telling you it can and it, and it will, you gotta, but you, at the same time, you have to be transparent and you have to go to the source of the pain, that pain that we run from, like pain creates passion. Or it can create evil. It depends on like yeah. your choice afterwards of what you do. I believe. Yeah. You know. No, I I totally agree. That's yeah, dude. Sorry. So, so no, sorry. Do you have anything else for this? Uh, per, uh, I think yeah. I got my. I got all the. I think I got all the points. Uh, yeah. yeah sorry i have like no on, like a full-on monologue no, there for a minute i went on a full-on thing with the <laughs> fucking abortion shit we're good dude. it's our podcast that's true but um do you want do you like should we talk about something like positive <laughs> oh i mean like you lighter were, you know mi- microalgae like just, microalgae yes dude tell me okay. about microalgae dude so you know how we talk constantly <laughs> It's a common yeah. theme within our podcast about global warming. Ooh. Right. Right? Yeah. Global warming. Yeah. Global Serious topic. Warm. Scientists Serious. are killing themselves over this, my friends. Scientists are killing themselves, and it's not being publicized. Anyways. Better help. Better help. M- micro, but I was watching, I, I saw it on TikTok, and I was just like, because I most of the time I'm just like, you get on there, and you're just like, okay, okay. And then it's like, yeah. this guy, so... His his idea, his theory was, so, you know how we have yards, like grass, right? Yes. Microalgae actually decarbonizes atmosphere. 
right? So this is his this is his theory, and this is his, the, what he's come up with. Mm-hmm. If we each had an average, average, if each American had, or each person nationwide, uh, not nationwide, or I think almost worldwide, he was saying, had yeah. a 280 square feet foot pool of microalgae on their on their properties, which is like an average sized pool that like people have like below ground. It could remove uh, 1.3 tons of carbon, which would be like the he was he it would remove the carbon and it would create a carbon negative existence eventually, where we would literally be negative carbon. Because the microalgae, I think, within like the fibers of it, like destroys the carbon in the air. Does that make sense? Yeah, like. He says eventually, like how eventually? Do you know? I think it was. I honestly, bro, I, if, if it was if it was a worldwide thing, I'm pretty sure he said a year. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty a sure. A year? Because think about it. If everybody does it though, yeah, two hundred like at square. once. Because he he was talking. He was like, the politicians aren't going to do things like this. The CEOs are going to do things like this. But if like people started banding together and creating microalgae pools and just having a different you know approach towards it and if everyone ban- like did this yeah i think it was, i'm pretty sure you're saying a year because it would take 1.3 tons out of the carbon out of mm-hmm. the air which is what's out there right now i think 1.3 tons of carbon no that's per oh i should have done my research I just it's it was math just... it's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> we don't know but, but dude that's no are you would you like cons- actually consider doing that Bro, as soon as I have property, that's about I'm going to put the fuck on it. But that's the thing, though. Property, like, our generation can't afford houses. So, and, like, but if we put microalgae pools, I'm pretty sure you can swim in microalgae pools. Yeah, maybe I, we can just put some microalgae in, yes. like, ponds and stuff. Or, uh, or like, pools. On, I mean, like, people would, like, I'm sure a lot of people would look at this with a lot of skepticism. But even having it, like, in apartment complexes. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have buildings, to be. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be just people that have property. Like, this could be, a, like, a, it's our citywide, you know? Oh, the mm-hmm. city has done this. Then they can do the carbon in the air within that city after a year of doing it. Something that uh, I saw a couple of years ago, like China, they in the middle of like, or they put a bunch of like buildings. They designed these buildings in the middle of like highly residential areas and in, in the sh- industrial areas also. Um, they just build these buildings and they just fill it full of like plants and like uh, just vegetation and that is supposed to help like the <laughs> air quality in China. But I think it's also uh, something to counter climate change at the same time. But China is one of the biggest like polluters in mm. the world. So I think it's good to have like whole skyscrapers built just full of plants and like vegetation like that. And if they do something with that microalgae, that could be very – I feel like we should do something like that in the States, like just like, have t- yeah. like skyscraper building just full of vegetation with the microalgae, like a pond around it maybe. Like, I mean, look, look at – there's monuments and statues and – you know, can you imagine how much more – I'm going to just say pretty or beautiful. You know how much more beautiful the world would be if it was all like – if they would do more plant-based like – statue sculpture type ideas like instead of like Here. an obelisk of just like this giant random black structure pointed to the sky which seems very weird and symbolic but if you take something like that you know and like somehow have some kind of artist perception bro like with plants bro making like full on like somehow well structured i mean they would have to take some work from the community but dude That'd be sick. No, that no, that's actually such a good idea. You know all those fucking Confederate statues in the South that they were crying about being torn down like a mm-hmm. couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Re- get rid of those statues, but also mm-hmm. replace them with climate statues. 
right. where it's you yeah you take an artist's inspiration but you throw in a bunch of healthy living things like vegetation and the microalgae have a pond around it you know yeah. Like a ravine, you can have a fucking bridge going over it so people can admire the statue full of like tr- plant and stuff. Right. Like, yeah, like start doing yeah, that. Yeah. And even in the north, like just create little centers for like the climate statues. Mm. That's what I'm saying, dude. Start the initiative. Let's start a petition right now. Like, like I just picture a world. Like, I understand technology, like, I feel like with, uh, even though I hate saying it, the overall progression of, like, humans, like, we do have to sway that way, but it doesn't mean that we have to get rid of all the plants in the world, my friends, like, come on, yeah. add, like, make it, and, like, you, it would take, I'm, I'm sure, like, an artist, you know, they refocus on their art, they wouldn't know, like, the different colors of certain plants, you know, and they could sketch it out, but then it would be, like, a community thing where like the science, like the botanists in the area would get with like the artists and then there's collaboration going on. Yeah. You know, and it could be just like a thing, dude, where it's just like collab. Right. Let's do it. it. Take the Statue of Liberty down and let's plant a giant (laughs) tree, bro. I saw some stuff about the Statue of Liberty that seems sketch. What do you mean? Have you seen that? Is it a Titan inside? No, dude. I saw like, so there's a painting of Lucifer, right? Okay. Yes. There's a painting of Lucifer that was done years before the Statue of Liberty. And I've always kind of looked at the Statue of Liberty. I'm like, I mean, I feel like if it's Lady Liberty, like her name would be Hol- Olga, you know? It just seems, <laughs> I don't know. But, dude, it's weird, bro. It's super weird. Um, It just made me think of like, the development of this country and that make they like kind of make me nervous in a way it, because it looks just like the painting like yeah. verbatim bro i'm sorry it's like it's weird to, well like this... if it, with that stick like with with that view on it i'm like wait yeah i that is sus if like there's a fucking darker conspiracy but the statue of liberty i think it was made in france it was given as a gift uh from france was it? and it's it was supposed to, yeah it's supposed to represent uh us freeing slaves like the statue of liberty is a slave and at the bottom of her feet there's chains like shackled around her and they're like torn off a little bit i think and it's supposed to represent like freedom and welcoming in- immigrants and stuff that's just like what the statue of liberty uh resembles if there's like a darker meaning behind well, the whole thing that would be fucking crazy because they say lucifer was a light bringer what is lady liberty holding light a torch yes like i don't know this guy was like going into a full synopsis i'm trying to find a certain here it is here it is here i found it send, send it, it to, to me. you right now i'm sending it to you as we speak look at that painting put it in the bio look at that painting and then look at think, th- and then think think about the Statue of Liberty. I see it. And and tell me what you think. Um, it's the same hand gesture, my brother. Is it? The, the right hand is where they're holding up the lantern. Yeah. Or the torch, bringing in the light, the light bringer Lucifer, right? And then now it's got a crown. Right. Or you could look at it with the American, you know, perception of the crown. I don't even know what that is after the, like, I don't know. It just made me think, bro. Makes me think about a lot. <laughs> but then I try not I, to think about it. I, what do you <laughs> then think? I try what do you not think? to think. I, I think it's a reach, honestly. It doesn't, it doesn't really look like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, they're in the same, like, uh, gesture. They're doing the same, like, pose. Uh, but I don't know. I oh, don't think so. One second. <laughs> one second. Give me the video of the person, like, explaining it. That's what I thought you were going to send me, and I can put that in the bio. Okay, here, I'm going to just put them side by side, then. One, real quick. <laughs> okay. Let me see this shit. Just delivered. Mm-hmm. Uh, for people that don't know, Gannon sent me a picture of 
what looks like to be like a Roman warrior. Is that supposed to be Lucifer? That's a painting of Lucifer. That was done by an artist where they were painting Lucifer. Okay. And it just looks like a white guy. It looks like it looks like a Roman person with like, uh, like a helmet on with like that little red flary stuff. Kind of looks like um, Saturnian. Uh, what's that? Yeah. What's that? Elden Ring boss? Rag? Rad? Ra- oh, Radon. Radon. It kind of looks like his helmet. Kind of. Not really, but like the fluff at the top. Um, and he's, he's just got his arm raised to the right. He's like got the little finger gun action going on. Uh, can't see his left hand, left arm though. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the only similarity is like the, dude, the the bridge of the nose is like the exact same. No, it's not the, I mean the bridge maybe a little bit, but. The nostrils aren't really the same. Like, the lips are kind of similar, but... I mean, if you're uh, trying to... uh, (laughs) Am I trying to protect the Dark Order? (laughs) Is that what you're trying to say? I don't know. Like, I am. He's caught on. And did you hear about the Black Book (laughs) of the Freemasons? No. I know the Freemasons are sus, but I never heard of this Black Book. Apparently, there's a black book that's got the Bible. It's got parts of the Bible, the Quran, and another religious work that I can't remember off the top of my head. And it takes like pretty much all elements from that, and then they're able to do crazy. Th- like some guy was trying to say, change the weather. Nice. Which I was like, what? But I don't know. And then you just think about the Freemasons, and then you know that, like, America is, like, you know, founding fathers were Freemasons. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah, it kind of goes back to the my whole, like, Rome is the new, or America is the new Rome theory. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. like, Rome never fell, but, like, there's just been so many coincidences that, like, it's just, it never fell. It just was reborn into this other parts of the world yeah. it's kind of what if we are just living a giant lie what if nothing is real <gasps> there's only been one one soul entity controlling everything in the world because you gotta imagine like you gotta really think about it Kabul. we started <coughs> as like one tribe really like not one tribe but a bunch of other tribes you gotta think like the the last powerful tribe probably got everybody together and was like hey motherfuckers let's roll forever and then they just planted seeds throughout history and they they made things look a little too like perfect you know according to their plan Mm -hmm. everything's divided everything's at war but everything's all being controlled by one entity kind of like full metal alchemist Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I'm I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist. I've been throwing a lot of Full Metal Alchemist references to Ganon, and I'm with <laughs> but it. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I love that show. I love that. That's it's one of my fucking. Tops. It's so good. fucking good, dude. But I'm rewatching it with Shiloh. She loves it. Um, well, do the do that Roy Mustang point because I, I I was trying mm-hmm. to defend my boy, but you made a great point. Yeah, we when we were talking about how like uh, fuck, what were we talking about? How like. like I was like talking about like how Roy Mustang oh. ended up siding with uh oh shit Edward it was Edward and then Ulrich that's her last name Ulrich fuck what's their names Ed and Al Ed and Al yeah that's a little way easier to point it yeah yeah and then he finally saw I was like yeah if we had some like Roy Mustangs on our side we'd be fucking fine you know because we were yeah. just like trying like if we could even hypothetically get enough people together like could we actually mm-hmm. make a change in this world. And yeah. Yeah. But, and then you, that, you had the point with Roy Mustang, though. <laughs> yeah. So the the point that I was making, uh, I was just saying, like, how, like, would we be able to organize and overthrow the system? And uh, I made the, and Gannon made the point, is like, you know, if, like, the military gets involved, like, there's, like, those are, like, our brothers, brothers and sisters, you know. 
who are fighting in arms. They're just like, you know, they're one of us. But I made the point of like the whole Roy Mustang thing is Mm -hmm. he participated in the war in Ishval. And so did all the other good guys, quote unquote. They all led the genocide at the military's discretion. They knew it was wrong, but they still went through with it. And they they just they were still the good guys because they were trying to change the military from the inside, but they still went along with the atrocities. That's what I was making yeah. the point of. <laughs> like, okay, well, maybe there might be some good guys who decide not to shoot us in the streets, but there also might be some guys that are like, this is wrong, but I'm still going to shoot them, but I'm going to change the government later on. I mean... Because I feel like at that point, for like a true revolution, we would have to look at people with the hope of reformation. Because like, if if we can't like help people try to like reform their life, you know, and their views, so it's not like powered with the government's propaganda and hatred, and instead like be like, wait, I want to actually see good for people, and I know there's people that are in the military that have a mindset where they're like, I want genuinely good for people. And I feel like that's what I like. They fuel that with propaganda also to then sway people that want to protect people to then be thrown into these situations where they are like fighting for government greed, essentially. Yeah. And it sucks. Yeah. It's, it's a sucky par- a parallel. But at the same time, we have to... I feel like if if we have to look at any kind of future reformation, we have to have reformation amongst each other, too. Yeah, you know exactly. Like a fresh slate, ideal, if you will. <laughs> well, we can't get a free fresh slate until we burn the current slate down. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I that mean, goes yeah. into my that goes into my point where like we just need to start getting more people in charge instead of just these paid super rich wealthy people Empty suits yeah these suits we get the people involved and we expand mm-hmm. our government to just be accessible to everybody that mm-hmm. way that way we get real change it's and easy dude, we can do yeah. it it's it's just gonna take a lot of organizing and like dude i was thinking like humans like currency relatively in the existence of like all of humanity just seems so weird it just seem because we use a trade right yeah and i feel like even if you want like even a deeper rooted uh it's a word it, it, the act of something being commun like com is it communistic you know what i'm saying like if we want a more like even more communistic way of looking at everything I think if we could get somehow, it would, that would be like a fucking push. But like, if we could even get rid of like, because they want to switch to a one world currency, right? Mm-hmm. The way I'm seeing it, then it's like the people that, you know, we were talking about earlier, you know, like maybe the actual people in charge would then be in charge of the currency across the world. Yeah. Which I don't. I just feel like if we would even want to even get deeper and, like, more in tune with each other overall. Because, like, think about it. We could have, like, trade, like, an actual trade. And it sounds dorky, but, like, dude, the Grand Exchange, right? RuneScape. Yeah. The Grand, ex- the Grand Exchange. They're, they use currency in that, yes. But if it was, like, set up so, like, it's, like, on the weekend, you know, and, like, you got people that have a real passion with, like, making – making teas right making like they have all different kinds of herbs for teas and then they have a certain amount of teas and then they they want something we could all like you could figure out what's going on in the community in that sense to where it would be like a certain trade going on like a flea market you know and have these it, on, it like, would be like the a, weekend. a bartery or, or a bartering state or yeah. system which i th- that's dude, i th- i think ideally if we could somehow make it so that it was like evenly worth across the way you know like and it could be i'd be i feel like it'd be discretion of the person that is trying to trade honestly but and i i could see the flaws in it but yeah sorry 
No, yeah, I that's the main thing because I see the biggest flaw in it, and that's just what if somebody starts out with nothing and just can't get any footing down the line, you know? Like maybe basically, have... basically the people who have everything are able to get anything because they have all this stuff to trade, you know. Instead of focusing so much on this, like, it's like I feel like so there's that saying with Einstein and education, right? Like where he's trying to talk about like you can't judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, right? Mm-hmm. And I've always seen that with, like, growing up in education. It was just, like, it was all about what they wanted you to learn. And, like, I know, I know people have different passions in life, and I feel like that gets dampered throughout life. And that's why when you get people get old, they just get fucking crusty because they realize they lived their life a certain way for certain people and certain ideology. Instead of, like, taking what, like, what we're passionate about, you know, whether it's, like, music, art, like, um harvesting you know like this people find passion in different things you know but we're not given this ability if somehow we can even make it so that have like like a start program you know like for everyone in the country what your passion is you can you can you know if you want to get into it and you're serious about it like have a fresh like a start program you know like give them the ability and give them like the the means yeah i mean i know i know that would also like oh man it would it would take a lot. No, it this w- is. I've thought the exact same thing. I think the the main problem is our education system is so focused on getting people ready for their careers. We're not focused on education. Right. I think it, if we if school was just to educate people about science, math, like literature, English, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think we also need to have like more home ec and health classes. Also, we need to like get people. We need to teach people how to live and how to learn. We don't. We shouldn't be teaching people how to like stay focused in a job and like test a certain way. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's not that's not doing anything for humanity, in my opinion. And yeah, right. I do think we need to. I think like. Once you hit high school, let's keep, like, the same system structure. Let's say you hit high school. That's when you start branching out into all these different uh, avenues uh, for – I don't want to say career because that kind of just goes against what I just said. But Mm. uh, let's say, like, you're interested in art, science, and X, Y, and Z. You take these certain classes that educate you more – in a more advanced way on those subjects. Mm -hmm. And if you can see a path for you, and if you're very passionate about that, you work with like a social worker, let's say they join the school. They're a part of the school. You work with them and they're like, Oh, we can branch you onto this, this and that. Like, we'll, we'll narrow your searches down for like resources on this and that and whatever. Right. I th- I think that would be a good a very good system yeah. just to bring humanity back into education a bit. And 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 do it so it could be like classes like um so so what am I trying to, I'm trying to think of how to like cuz right now I'm in barber school and like there's a new group of people that come in like every couple of weeks, right? I'm I'm one of these new people. Um have it like that, but like for the first couple months have it like open. So like have a list of like people like things that people have been interested in and they want to get into have them write it all down have different programs in this like a giant ctc honestly but have it open so that you're not just stuck with that first thing dude i don't i'm i'm 24 and i'm just realizing like really what i want to do you know what i'm saying yeah like there's so much pressure from these these i'm just gonna keep using the word constructs these constructs (laughs) that are given to think that we have to have what we want to do decided by the age of 18 that is ridiculous that is honestly absolutely... by the age of 17, 16, you yeah. should like, they, they try to pressure you to it's think ridiculous. that you should know what you want to do by like before you even leave high school. Yeah. It is insane. Yeah. It is insane. Especially and I, I, I hate when... that because I, I feel like I made the wrong choice. Honestly, I'm like s- super in debt with college. 
I, I, and I, I find like, okay, maybe I would have been interested more into science. What if I was more interested into learning, uh, like coding software, computer engineering? What if I would have been more interested in just like nature or whatever, you know, like what if I, or it's just anything. I just feel like I, I saw something that I was somewhat relatively interested in and good at. And I just rolled with it because I figured if I start earlier, the better it will end up for me. That wasn't the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, and that's, they just leave you with this debt. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not like, but like they just leave you with it, and like, you can't all be, file all for bankruptcy you, either. And it's all because you wanted what a better future for yourself. Oh man, yeah. I, I invested in my future, and uh, now I'm paying that off for the rest of my life. I'm sorry, Chase. Really, it's okay. <laughs> it sucks, dude. It's so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, Big Daddy Biden. Can't cancel that student loan debt. Right. I'm itching right. for it. It's just it would make more sense. You you but, gave like six six hundred million dollars to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You you keep bailing out these big corporations. I mean, you, it makes you think. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm all right, guys. Don't send me any donations, but my cash app is Chase. <laughs> cash money. Cash Chase money. Doing. What? Or money sign Chase doing. Well, yeah, that's how cash app works. I don't want yeah. fucking idiots sending me money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't send me any money, please. Don't. And if you want to send money, um, you can find us on all platforms, uh, <laughs> Spotify, Apple Podcast, um, YouTube, just about any kind of streaming site. Or if you really want to donate money, $5 a month, guys, subscription to mm-hmm. the Patreon. Yep. We have we have Next Caller on there. We have Death Our Friend. And like we discussed earlier, we're going we're gonna to start really getting back into that and hammering that up. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's just five dollars a month. If you want to support the podcast, we're there. Yep, we're trying out here. We're trying, bro. We're struggling. I need to get back into those fucking TikToks, man. Those I've been bump- lacking. Those are coming. They're coming back, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, and like I said, I I need to pick up that our friend. Like I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you, dude. And yeah, yeah. All good things come in time. Yeah, that's what that's I like true. to say. I mean, like like you were saying, like Chase works every day, you know, and it's not yeah. like like Chase Chase's got Shiloh, Chase's got you know Miko, he's got like he's got other things to worry about too, you know. It's not like we could just hop on like w- this is our existence, this is our you know yeah. like like we're trying to we're trying to do this and we're trying to advocate positivity at the same time function as like the americans that we're supposed to be at quote unquote yeah man (laughs) no i i absolutely agree yeah i work i work on myself too exactly exactly gotta work on your mental health but i mean yeah yeah also yes so how are you feeling about it oh sorry (laughs) i feel really good no you're fine dude no sorry we we went way over time that i needed to i'm sorry I'm so no, sorry. it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. I it's just got fine. so pumped up, dude. I was, I was, I know. Lots of, <laughs> lots of topics, lots of fire <laughs> in the booth. But, um, yeah, in the booth. <laughs> no, you're good, dude. You're good. Uh, do you want to send this off or do you want to, or do I want to? Um, choose joy over rage. I heard this. I think I said that before. Did I say this before? Um, just real quick, you are given the choice to react to certain things and feeding into negative energy and feeding into rage. Like, I saw this theory, ultimately, like, you just like being angry. And then you think to yourself, I thought to myself for a second, I'm like, I don't like being angry, you know? And then you even mm-hmm. get angry just thinking about it. And then um, you, you got to break it down. And it's like, wait a second. We choose how we react and how we perceive things. Choose joy mm-hmm. over rage, you know? Yeah. That's that's what I had. <laughs> oh, that that was great, man. I love that. Thank you, brother. Choose choose love 
Mm-hmm. Always. But I also want to. Oh, sorry. Did sorry. You... I just said always. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said. Oh, okay. You just said always. Mm-hmm. I also had another thing. Uh, I'm gonna paraphrase. It's from Demon Slayer, but um, the the strong were born into this world to protect the weak. Yes. And I, love I think it's it's your responsibility as someone who is strong to protect those who are weaker than you. Mm-hmm. That's the intro to uh, also uh, Here We Go by Mac Miller. It's in the intro. Demon Slayer wasn't out then. I mean, but the manga was probably before it. Oh, uh, was it? I, don't, I feel like it probably was. It was on... Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mac Miller. Definitely. Love you. Miss you. Love you. But you want to drop that phone number one more time for the audience? I'll, yeah. Uh, my notebook. So the, the phone number is 1-800-273-8255. And that is the crisis hotline. And we will drop more resources in the bio. Like we said, make sure yes. you guys are taking care of yourselves if you have an issue. Please reach out to mental health professionals better help it's mm-hmm. affordable accessible we're not sponsored uh we just want you guys to take care of yourselves uh, ultimately yes yeah beautiful but yeah man uh do you have anything else <laughs> that, that was good it, bro <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> well hey guys thank you guys for watching or listening we don't have anything to watch um but my name was chase and i was am and will always be ganon peace Bye-bye.